Welcome to several examples on how to determine the domain of a function given the graph of a function. Looking at the provided graph, notice how we're told, if we do not see an endpoint, assume the graph continues forever in the same direction. So we assume this graph continues in this direction forever, and we're asked to write the domain of the function using interval notation, where the domain of a function is a set of all possible inputs, which are always found along the horizontal axis. Now this question doesn't ask, but the range of a function is a set of all possible outputs, which are always found along the vertical axis. But because we're looking for the domain, we can determine the domain from the graph by analyzing the graph from left to right or horizontally. Notice how the leftmost point of this graph is this point here, where the input is negative one. And because this point is closed, that means negative one is in the domain of the function. And then from here, Again, analyzing the graph from left to right, the graph moves toward the right and approaches the input value of positive infinity. And therefore, the domain is the interval from negative one to infinity, including negative one. Another way to find the domain would be to project this graph onto the horizontal axis, where again, it would start here at negative one and then move toward the right. So using interval notation, the domain is the interval from negative one to infinity where the interval is closed on negative one because it includes negative one, so we put a bracket here, and we put a parenthesis to the right of infinity. If we knew the input variable was x, we could also express the domain using inequalities as x is greater than or equal to negative one. But again, this question does ask for interval notation. Let's look at another example. Looking at the graph, again, we assume it moves in this direction forever. Analyzing the graph from left to right, we can determine the domain. The leftmost point is this point here. Notice how now it's an open point. And at this open point, notice how the input value would be negative four. But because the point is open, negative four is not in domain. But from this point, notice how the graph does move toward the right and approach positive infinity. Which means the domain is the interval from negative four to infinity, but now it does not include negative four. If we project this graph onto the horizontal axis, it would start at negative four but not include negative four and then move toward the right. And therefore the domain is the interval from negative four to infinity. We say the interval is open on negative four because it does not include negative four. So we have a parenthesis here and a parenthesis to the right of infinity. Using x as the input variable, we can also express a domain as x greater than negative four. Let's look at another. Here we have two endpoints, one that's open and one that's closed. Analyzing the graph from left to right to determine the domain. The graph starts at the input of negative three, but does not include negative three because of the open point, and then moves to the right until we have an input value of positive six. Because the point is closed, six is in the domain of the function. Projecting this graph onto the horizontal axis, it would be open on negative three, move to the right to positive six, and it includes six, so we have a closed point here. So the domain is the interval from negative three to six. It's open on negative three because it does not include negative three. It's closed on six because it includes six, so I have a bracket to the right of six. When using interval notation, these values must be from least to greatest. If we wrote the six first and then comma negative three, that would be incorrect. Using inequalities with the input variable x, we can also express the interval as x is greater than negative three and less than or equal to six. Let's look at one more example. Again, we assume the graph moves in this direction forever as well as this direction forever. Analyzing the graph from left to right, the graph moves left forever as well as right forever without any holes or breaks, and therefore the domain is going to be all real numbers. If we project the graph onto the horizontal axis, again, it would move to the right forever as well as to the left forever. Using interval notation, the interval is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And we always use parentheses when using positive or negative infinity. Using inequalities, we can also express a domain as x is greater than negative infinity and less than positive infinity. Or we could just say all real numbers. I hope you found this helpful.